Hi everyone, this is Ashnath Kothari over here. In this particular video, I'm going to be discussing the indicative solutions of MCQ of CV1 for IFOA September 2022 session. Please do note that these solutions which I've come up with is as per my understanding and uh, you know, certain questions obviously become very dicey, uh, you know, in MCQs. So it could be that, you know, even for me on some day, I might feel that option A is the better answer. And on some other day, it might seem as option B. So for a few questions, I would be highlighting where I feel there is, you know, uh, at least in my understanding, I was majorly confused, you know, which of the options among the two should be the more correct one. So obviously the answer key, which I'm coming out to be in certain questions, that might not be the case, which, you know, IFO has come out with given the level of, I'll say subjectivity involved in certain of these MCQs. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you all are updated with the latest content which we release. Please do like the video if you are finding it useful. Along with that, I'll also like to inform you that we would be starting with our new live batches on October 2nd for April 2023 session. So classes are available in live online mode, live offline mode, as well as pre-recorded lectures mode. All our students will be getting access to all of these three without any additional charges. Offline classes currently are being held at Calcutta only. But again, uh, just because you're not from Calcutta, that shouldn't deter you to, from joining us. Fun fact, in the last two years, more than 90% of our students have been outside Calcutta and yet we have been able to deliver, you know, pretty decent results. Uh, if not very great in your eyes, but even consistently very, very nice results and probably uh, among the best in the entire country. So location is something which shouldn't deter you from joining us. Also, uh, if you are enrolling before September 30th, we have attractive early bird offers, you know, customized to an individual student, depending what papers they have attempted or cleared so far. So yeah, in case of, you know, you're looking to join us, do join us at the earliest. We just have one single batch for the entire term for each paper. So now coming back to the paper overall, uh, you know, I'll say students did find the CB1 paper extremely easy. At least the ones I have interacted with, uh, most of them did find the papers easy. Obviously, a couple of students did find the paper lengthy and all. Even when I was going through the paper, I wouldn't say lengthy, but compared to the previous few settings, this paper was rather a more direct one, at least for well-prepared students. So let's quickly, you know, go through the solutions. I'll also be discussing uh, specifically on certain questions where I feel, you know, I'm a bit unsure which option might be the best one and, you know, the rationale behind them. So starting with the first question, this is fairly straightforward difference between executive and non-executive members. So non-executive members are some ones, you know, who are not involved in the day-to-day -day management of the company. So it should be option D. Question number two, the current account balance is 200 overdraft facility of thousand is there. Therefore, the maximum amount that can be withdrawn from the account, given there's a balance of 200, it's 1200. Again, option D. Question number three. Which of the following explains why depreciation is not an allowable expense for tax purpose in many countries? So this was one of the questions which I'll say was a tricky one. So option A looks completely good, you know, nothing wrong with it. I mean, that is a major, let's say, deficiency of depreciation that it cannot be determined objectively. You can use straight line method, reducing balance method, any sort of other method, you know different uh obviously different equipments different things will be undergoing depreciation at a different pace so uh, at least in my understanding the calculation of it is not very objective it's extremely subjective option b depreciation does not involve a cash flow which is also true remember that depreciation is a non-cash flow expense it is just used so as to you know reduce the uh, let's say the value of the asset over its useful life option c governments do not wish to encourage loss of value that is not the case. So clearly C is wrong. You know, if you're, when you are doing this in exam, this is how you might, you know, planning to do. Also given that exams for CB1 and CB2 are going to become OBA format from April 2023. So, you know, elimination of answers in MCQ also becomes extremely important. Option D, tax relief is already granted on asset operating costs. Again, not ready. So I was confused between A and B. I thought maybe A, but again, you know, it could also be B that it does not involve a cash flow. So Again, it depends on in many countries have stated. So it you know, a student might have to be aware, you know, what uh might be the rationale behind it not being allowed in many different countries. So as for its solution, you know, I've used B, but again, it could be A as well. I'll say B again makes more sense to me, but on certain days, you know, I, even right now when I'm thinking, I'm like, no, A also makes more sense. 
so could be anyway between b and a over here initially i thought it was a but then uh, again there might be you know regulatories might be there or you know certain taxation regimes might be there or accounting principles might be there if they give us certain specific formula so either of these question 4 is a double taxation relief so what basically happens is you're not taxed twice so let's say if you're earning some amount in another country and you're paying the taxes over there then in a local country you do not need to pay the tax if the the taxation in a domestic country is let's say lower than that of the other country at the same time you cannot reclaim any additional taxes paid so let's say if you are residing in uh, india let's say you have income coming in from united kingdom say the tax rate in united kingdom is 20 percent and let's say in india it's 25 percent or uh, let me take another case you know this case won't make sense let's say if hypothetically in uk it's 30 percent and in india it's 25 percent so you might have paid taxes at the rate of 30 percent but in a local country that is india it's 25 percent so you cannot claim additional five percent from the indian tax authorities that is not the case so it's basically you're paying for the higher of the two countries tax rates question number five again one question where i find a you know few students i'll say who are not well prepared did make a mistake remember whenever rights issue comes up the x rights price it has nothing to do with what the amount is going to be used for the amount which are raising through rights whether you invest it you do whatever whether it is generating profits or losses that does not affect the share price you know that does not affect the share price immediately in the long run obviously you know these factors would be uh kind of you know affecting it so here this you know estimated net present value of 140 million it does not have anything to do in my understanding all you need to do is 100 million value is 11 so 100 into 11 plus you know 9 at the rate of 9 to 70 million so this is basically 30 million shares so this will be you know uh, 100 into 11 plus 270 divided by 100 plus 30 which will give us 10.54 many of you were getting b 11.62 if you're incorporating this 140 million as well and i'll say this is a good mcu question because ideally they should be giving options you know which might come using different methods so that only the well-prepared students get that right some of you who might have say if this 11.62 was not there only then anyone would have you know just ticked option a because this using 140 million would not have given any other figure as such so that is why i'll say this is good uh uh something which at least in my personal understanding i find it good when i give such options obviously it might confuse the candidates but then that is the purpose of an exam to test your knowledge and your ability to apply your knowledge question number six again i'll say slightly tricky one which of the following explains why preference shares are usually classified as death when analyzing a company's financial position preference debits are tax deductible preference shares affect the risky risk on ordinary shares so b yes because you know you cannot pay dividends to the ordinary shareholders before you pay to the preference shareholders and so on preference shares are legally death again when they say legally it, it might be a bit confusing obviously the material is as per uk itself but for other residents you know students outside uk who are not aware of the complete uk tax regulations it might become a bit tricky part d preference shares carry the same right as debt so clearly d looks wrong i mean preference shares is equity in that sense they do not carry the same right as debt at least the debt holders will be ranked higher compared to preference uh share you know preference the ones who are holding preference shares so here what i feel is uh, once uh, when I was googling it, I saw that in UK preferences are treated as death. So I thought maybe it's option C. But then again, when I tried to Google it on another day, I didn't find that particular link only. I tried with all keywords and all. So in my understanding, it could be that, you know, maybe preferences affect the risk of an ordinary sh shares or even C, you know, either of them. So this is what I've come up with either B or C. In the exam, had it come, you know, I might have done option B. Because it was open book work, if I had referred to Google, then I saw option C. But other than that, you know, I, I'll say it will be B. Because again, if preferences are legally dead, then they should have the same rights as the debt holders, which is not the case. So I'll say option B makes more sense. And yeah, that, that makes more sense. Again, A, you might think, you know, preference dividends are tax de deductible. So if you're giving any dividends to the preference shareholders, you can deduct it out of tax. Again, I'm not sure. Regarding the treatment of same, it might be different in India, it might be different in United Kingdom, so on. Next question, number seven, shareholder value approach is there. This is fairly straightforward. Question seven, it's B. 
then question number eight it's uh d uh question number nine i'll say you know publish news of the proposal and check movements in the share price so option b and question number 10 again some students uh were you know slightly confused in this my understanding is if we're using 14 percent for the oil projects and we're rejecting all of them we are rejecting all of them it means some of the projects have an internal rate of 14 percent they might have 13.5 13 12 10 anything so this 14 percent could be high so i felt a might be the most appropriate alternatively you know, C as well. If managers overstate the internal rate of return on proposals, then 14% is a bit too high. It could be that, you know, if all projects are being rejected, so the managers might have a, a let's say, an external, what to say, a desire or push. I'm not getting the correct word for saying, or they might be, you know, influence or force to, you know, overstate the IRR so that their projects are accepted. And in that case, you know, 14% could be artificially high. So I'll stick to rather A itself over here. So I hope that you all did find this particular video useful. Again, in case you feel for any of the questions, you feel a different answer, feel free to share that in the comment section. We can have a healthy discussion regarding it. Again, the options which I stated, I'm very open and honest about it. Two, three questions, I'm not really sure. As I'm saying on some day, I feel it's another option. On another day, I feel it's another option. So that is the case with two MCQs of CV1. So yeah, that is all. Thanks everyone.